it's been six months into oh yeah into 45's reign of um terror i was thinking more ineptitude i was just saying competence mediocrity no no, no. The, he he likes the fear so let's say reign of terror that's not how you spell heresy <laughs> <laughs> As you can see, the Twitch chat is uh, is li- alive and well. I had to update the plugin, uh, but it, it is now available. So uh, thank you, Bookshelf Zombie, uh, for chiming in. Heresy, long live the God Emperor. Um, no, um, <laughs> just no. No. In some ways, <laughs> I almost long for that dystopia, but not right now. Not right now. Not right now. More drugs. I don't like More drugs the idea are necessary. Corpse starch rations. Mm. <laughs> so, um, it's been six months. Whatever it has been, it has been interesting. It's our half anniversary. I rather not have. I want boring. Boring would be wonderful at this point, but hell, give me HW back. Just this I- week, we lost Spicer. Last week. I see. Farewell, Spicy. <laughs> oh, how how we knew you shouldn't have been in that position to start with. Yeah, yeah. It amazing how some people can be promoted to their their level of incompetence, isn't it? And this was somebody that Priebus specifically wanted. He must have seen something beneath the bunny costume that, that really Ooh. or or maybe the bunny saw something <laughs> while he was in the costume. That he shouldn't have. <laughs> There's nothing under the costume. <laughs> it gets hot in there. <laughs> it's just a void. <laughs> no, that's in his soul. That's the soul. So that's why he stole the main fridge? I don't know why. The, 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 the bunny was never a costume. Oh. The human suit was the costume. Oh. Oh, is this like a Donnie Darko thing? Is that yeah. where we're going? Oh. Why was he wearing that stupid human suit? Wow. So where's the plane? <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> That's on its way. Yeah. Okay. So Spicer mini fridge. That's what I. Okay. Yep. It's there. Okay. Just doing a little Google. I, I told you it exists. Spicer <laughs> really wanted to have a mini fridge in the White House. This is on the New York Post seven days ago. Uh, or Huffington Post uh, six days ago, the curious tale of Sean Spicer and the mini fridge in the night is, is the headline of the article. In the night. <laughs> With the subheading, you can't make this shit up. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, Mr. Spicer. Um, formerly the White House Press Secretary Sean Spicer stole a mini fridge from his junior staffers. It was alleged Friday. Uh, citing unnamed sources, the Wall Street Journal reported in its story on the roller coaster ride of Spicer's tenure as press secretary that he had really, really wanted a mini fridge for his office about a month into his job. So, like any polite co worker, Spicer sent someone to ask the junior staffers down the hall to give them their fridge. Uh, they said no, according to the report. So, Mr. Spicer waited until sundown after his young staffers had left. To take matters into his own hands, the journal wrote. He was spotted by fellow White House officials lugging an icebox down the White House driveway after a (laughs) PM. Oh, it was the driveway he was lugging it down. Yeah. uh, After being denied, Spicer allegedly just took what he wanted anyway from a group of people that the journal described as surviving on lean cuisine frozen lunches. (sighs) So... I'm just imagining him prowling around, like know. singing his own theme music, like Kronk from the Emperor's New Groove. No, no, no. Kronk was cool. Don't insult Kronk. Don't, yeah, don't insult Kronk. I said like Kronk. But that's still too close. That's. No. Can't do it. Can't do it. No. Spicy, spicy, the wonder hamster. <laughs> Closer? Probably too close now. Too close now (laughs) on that one. Um, But uh, he lost a job. Apparently. No, he resigned. No one resigns. No, no. He was told to resign. No, no. Spicy resigned because he didn't like Scaramucci. Okay. 
that I might actually be able to buy as a as a valid no, excuse that, that for, is, for that resigning. Is what the Wall Street Journal and the Washington Post were reporting is yes. that when in hearing the the oncoming of Scaramucci as communications director, uh, Spicer and pretty much pleaded his case uh, was overruled, and with that he resigned. <laughs> he was like, "This guy can't even do the Fandango. He's a he's a fraud." We need a sudden bolt of lightning. Yeah. Very, very frightening. He is. Me. <laughs> <laughs> he really, truly is. <laughs> Book show zombie. Well, spicy hungry. Spicy need show. fridge. <laughs> <laughs> is he Solomon Grundy? <laughs> <laughs> no. Spicy Grundy. <laughs> I can go with that. Burn. Okay. All right. Anyway. Mm. Okay. So... There has been a changing of the guard in the White House, uh, in the West Wing. Oh, it keeps uh, changing, too. Yeah. So today being Friday, it is trash day in Washington, where all the garbage that they don't want to get major headlines is dragged out, <laughs> um, much like Spicer's mini fridge. And this is going to come back. I mean, <laughs> that's that's not going away anytime, buddy. Um, so... <sighs> Miss Sanders took the job of the of the mouthpiece of the king. Yes, H- Huckabee Sanders has 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 taken taken the press secretary role. But over her is Scaramucci. Is now Scaramucci. Who? How can we best describe Scaramucci? To someone who has never met him, seen him, but perhaps has seen lots of movies involving New Jersey gangsters. Uh, actually, I have a number of things that you can view to get a good idea of Scaramucci. Okay. Uh, first, uh, Gordon Gecko from Wall Street. All right. I could see that. Th- then you go to Futurama. And look up the 80s guy episode. He is, in fact, the 80s guy. Oh, wow. I'm just waiting for him to say that he has bonitis. Wow. Um, Yeah. He looks almost exactly the same. Jeez, you're right. I'm not wrong on this. Jeez, you're right. already memes. Oh. Um, So... Those two combined, and then just somebody who desperately, desperately wants power. Just mix all those, that, that melange in of, of everything 80s, everything bad from the 80s, mix it together in a pot, pour pour that nutrient broth into a suit and you have Scaramucci. <laughs> um, yeah, Twitter has apparently decided that Anthony Scaramucci is the Bonitis guy from Futurama. This is this is now widely known. It is on the internet, obviously. Also, um, his wiki page refers to him not as Scaramucci, but as the Mooch. The Mooch. The Mooch. Why would anyone willingly go by the Mooch? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if this is because they're not stuck in their own cock, Andy. Come on. <laughs> Quoting him from a, 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 a oh Amber, <laughs> I miss you when you're not here. Uh, so on on screen oh we my have God, that smile, Anthony Scaramucci, <laughs> Scaramucci, e. Uh, White House Communications Director. Scary Mooch. Scary Mooch right there. Yeah, that is a scary Mooch. Um, Hi. Yeah. Ah. Ah. <laughs> um, yeah, so oh, that's... That it's like smile. it has tried to treat into his suit. <laughs> Let's see if they've got a, a side-by-side. Oh, there we go. Is. They're the same person. They really, yeah. Wow. Even with the widow's peak. Mm-hmm. That's kind of sudden bolt of lightning. Person. Oh, my. That's right. Mm. 
Look at those oh, that's such a look. Oh. Uh, <laughs> yes. Oh, okay. Right. Much, much fun. Much fun was had here. Um, so, <laughs> bye bye. Oh, what is there to say about him other than that he would willingly call up a New Yorker reporter to try and intimidate them into giving sources? Mm -hmm. And then stay on long enough to make an absolute embarrassment of themselves on the record. Again, he didn't think that the conversation would be on record, but he had absolutely no relationship with this no. reporter. And just kept talking. And as a reporter, and especially somebody who works for The New Yorker, any contact with the White House is news. Yeah. And I will report on that because that's my job. Absolutely. Um, especially with the new communications director. Yeah, that's... Oh, no, I, I am going to quote you verbatim, and I am going to put that, and that is going to be my payday. <laughs> uh -oh. oh, yeah. Yeah, that's... Anyone who knows anything about journalism... Full recognition right that. there. Crazy. Also... So he already doesn't understand how journalists works, journalism works, and journalists work. Which is a and great. He's for the communication director. Yeah, yeah. It's great. yeah. No, th this man got this position because he has done so much to ingratiate himself with Trump, and we already know that True. he has a direct line to him, which is a wonderful transition to what happened this morning. What happened this morning, Daniel? What, <laughs> well, what Trump really likes, happened? Trump likes to tweet. Oh, does he mm. love to tweet? Oh, would, uh, would this happen to be foreshadowed by the interview that Scaramouche had? Oh, yes. Ah. Referring to Rince Priebus as Rince Penis and a <laughs> paranoid schizophrenic. Yeah. Uh, but it's He's not a lot to say about when they're out to get you. And President Trump started his day after returning from a trip from New York, which Priebus was in attendance. Uh, and on the plane, mm -hmm. sent out a tweet uh, touting his new chief of staff, John F. Kelly, the, the former Marine General and current director of Homeland Security. And so, then I think it's the third tweet that he thanked Priebus for his his service. That was the third tweet in the tweet storm. Yeah. So now he has to fill the gap in the Department of Homeland Security. Which is a confirmation post. So you have to nominate, and then they have to go through the confirmation process. So he... he Yanked the person that he's already gone through all the trouble of having that done for. And was actually confirmed wholeheartedly. Yeah. Uh, now, this is also a man who worked under the Obama administration. So, I'm just kind of going, given how little influence it seems Priebus has had within the Trump White House... Is the chief of staff position a ceremonial one only? Because I would say probably general, for, for his administration it is. Because in general, the chief of staff is the gatekeeper to the president. They're the right. ones who schedule a, a lot of his appointments, gets a, a lot of the information from staffers, and then consolidates that into briefings for the president. They're the person where everything gets funneled into, and he's the one that helps manages the president's day-to-day. -day. Yeah. Priebus did pretty much none of that. Um, in fact, when he was soon after he was brought on board, uh, Trump was quoted as saying that him and his chief strategist, Steve Bannon, would share the load. Uh, and we've right. already... Oh, and we've gosh. already seen from 
from the press over the six months, um, Bannon is pretty much holding the chief of staff role without having the title. Hmm. He is the guy that is sort of keeps the keys to Trump. But even then, not so much. That's part of the reason why we have all these leaks. Because if you want to get something in front of the president, you want to get it on Fox and Friends. Yeah. Because we know he watches Fox and Friends. So you leak the information that you want to get in front of the president so that it ends up being quoted and discussed on Fro- on Fox and Friends. Because you're not going to get to him. And we already know he operates on a kill the messenger scenario. If it's bad news, he, he doesn't want to hear it. And he will kill the messenger for the bad news. He also doesn't like to take verbal or written briefs. And written briefs, unless they have his name repeated multiple times, he, he loses, loses interest. In it. Yeah. <laughs> so that's why you have all the leaks. Is if you want to get something to the president's e- eyes and ears, you have to leak it. And the he's president's not going to change. News. No, no, he's not going to change at all. And in, if anything, he has uh, completely solidified the person that we thought he was. There's a lot of um, interesting theorizing out there about his uh, his mental state in respect to possible dementia. Oh wow! Yeah, yes, there's there's been a lot of talking about like, I mean, and I I'm not an expert, so I'm not about to comment on whether or not I think it's true or anything like that. But I just think it's interesting the connections that people have made um, to things like him leaving a car and then not realizing where the car he left is, even though it's literally directly behind him and he just left it. And people having to a lot of times corral him when he's moving like a, like uh, through a crowd or from one place to another, he'll wander off and people will have to come and like literally be like, no, 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 this way, Mr. President. The shiny uh, lights and cameras are over here, sir. Yeah. And um, there's been a lot of conjecture about that. And I think it's at least an interesting point of discussion um, because there's, yeah. there's, it's they've related it to, they've related it to like the whole notion of sundowning as well, because he kind of seems to be less hinged at night. Um, oh, okay. That 3 a.m. tweet storm? Yeah, and, and like obviously has some difficulty sleeping and things like that. And, uh, hmm. and his just not having any type of foundation in reality. Um, but, and, and I, I, I think it's interesting um, that people are making that connection. Um, again, I'm not an expert, so I'm not about to say whether or not well, there, it's there true. Has, or... There has been a lot of speculation about his mental state uh, over the course of the six months. Mm-hmm. Um, well, there was also speculation that he was on cocaine, too, uh, you know, at the end of his, his campaign run. I mean, it, that, yeah. it, there's been a lot of, of conjecture, but with... with very little evidence um and as an incredibly proud man i think we can say that safely as an incredibly proud man oh he would uh, admit that he admits that yeah i i would doubt even to his own defense would he he consent to any sort of test that may or may not prove dementia Mm -hmm. yeah i would agree with that Definitely. Yeah. Like somebody slipping him Viagra for his erectile dysfunction, but never to ever telling him that he has erectile dysfunction. Mm-hmm. They're vitamins, no, sir. He, They're just vitamins. Go ahead and... Yeah. yeah no, again, he, he, he wants to be in a constant state of praise and power. Yeah, he wants the adulation. Mm-hmm. That, that, that is something I think is is safe to say. And honestly, I mean, who doesn't want to be in a place of adulation and power? That, 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 I mean, it's nice when you can get it. Yeah. I mean, I think most people want to earn it though, or, or at least not be doing anything like in direct opposition to that adulation. You know what I mean? Yeah. But the thing is he thinks that he has. Yeah. No, he's he's deluded. I don't know if it's Mm -hmm. dementia. 
And honestly, us not being medical professionals, nor having access to the case in front of us. Or access to him, so. Well, yeah. Well, he would be the case. Yeah. Um, we don't have access to him, his medical records, any examination at all, or any information from attending physicians. We don't know. In fact, the last thing that we heard about any of his attending physicians is that if he, he loved him and that if he asked him for any prescriptions, he was going to get them. That's what we know. Uh, that and we know that he has been a regular user of Propecia. Right, which has uh, many side effects, uh, which are... None of which he suffers from, of course. Oh, no, of course not. <laughs> no. Um, not that correlation and causation are at all related. Um, of course, that would be a fallacy, though one must wonder sometimes. Um, so, I don't want to attack the man so much as his positions on things. <laughs> Fair. Um and with him coming out and saying trans are not allowed to serve in the military. Yeah. And that... yet not informing the military of that fact. Mm -hmm. Yeah, blindsiding uh, the Joint Chiefs. <laughs> no, uh, Brilliant idea. There was a really good article, uh, again, in the Washington Post and another one in Politico that helped to frame where that came from. Uh, from their journalism it seems as though there was a route between uh, Republicans in the House over uh, a budget, a budget bill, and those of the more conservative bents took umbrage with any military spending on the health of transgender soldiers. Mm -hmm. They saw this as something that we should not be spending money on whatsoever. And were willing to veto the budget bill, which had money in place for Trump's wall. And they took this up. Uh, they, they consulted with Mattis. We do not know to what degree. But mm -hmm. it seems as though they were rebuffed. And they didn't want to risk this going, th this issue coming up in... In conference over the bill in the House because it would reflect poorly on them and the moderate conservatives within the Republican Party would make this an issue and this would be a hill for you know the Democrats to climb on and prove themselves you know an ally to the LGBT community mm -hmm. yet again yeah um, and went directly to the president and go look if money is going to be spent on transgender medical health within our military we will veto your budget bill and just that's like the where, just like the planned parenthood uh, line items that they wanted to get rid of as well and thus the tweets happened so it's a no leverage function yeah. Yeah. about anything doing anything at all if it affects the wall that seems to be a very sensitive thing with him. I don't know why. Well, it was such a campaign, like... But we've seen him flip on so much other stuff from he, the campaign. Okay, he's flipped. However, he gave it a good shot. Ev everything that he has promised, no matter how crazy and impossible... Yeah, he promised to be an ally to the LGBT community. Which one's more important to him? The wall. Because Wait, it's it's going yeah. in his mind, it is going to be the eighth wonder of the world. You know, it's, it's, it's going to be something huge. It's going to be immense. It's going to be magnificent. It's going to be fifty feet tall, forty feet wide, all the and way down. It's going to be a part of his legacy as president. Right, a very and visible part from space. For the majority of his voter base, what matters more: the wall to keep out the Mexicans, or him being an ally to the LGBT? community. You got it. Right there. And if he consulted with Pence, which it is theorized. Well, um, he is the vice president. One would hope. I mean, really, one well, would hope right. that the president we, does we consult certain, with the vice president. We, we know for certain that he did not consult with any generals as the entire you know, def Department of Defense mm -hmm. was blindsided. Joint mm -hmm. Chiefs, Department of Defense, all were just what? 
Well, they're all good little soldiers. They'll just do what do what the commander in chief asks. Of oh, course. I loved their response though, which mm-hmm. was like, "We don't take orders from Trump's Twitter account." Mm-hmm. Like, well, <laughs> it, it, the the big thing is even in the the parsed and official speech that has come from the Joint Chiefs and others with, within the Department of Defense is until this is written down as a directive and given to us. Uh, just go with current procedures and orders. Business as um, usual. Yeah. Also, the other thing is, and this is more from the Politico article, is there's already an ongoing study within the Department of Defense on transgendered soldiers and how they affect the military. Mm-hmm. That study comes to conclusion the end of December. It is already ongoing within the Department of Defense and has been. Mm -hmm. And that's probably why Mattis rebuffed those House Republicans going, guys, we're we're already studying this. You'll get your answer in December. That's not soon enough. Our government is a mess. And thank you, Bookshelf Zombie, for uh, quoting the generals. Quote, our soldiers will continue to be treated with respect. End quote. Yes. <clears throat> very important, very critical. And true. I mean, I've, I've heard, and if you, if you listen, there are stories to be had of transgendered servicemen and women that are going through the process and there are things that must be met. The very first one is that being able to do the job mm-hmm. is of paramount yes. concern. You, you must be able to physically mm-hmm. perform your duties as a soldier. Mm-hmm. Um, In whatever capacity your job and, happens to be. And, and, and here's another thing, just, it's just slightly off, is on the same day that that this all occurs the British government thanks its transgendered soldiers oh yeah that this happens the same day when is the transgender day of remembrance I can't remember the day I, I don't know uh, I, I want to say it's sometime in October but I could be wrong yeah, many it's... of our, our military allies across the globe recognize and are perfectly fine with transgender troops mm-hmm. as as servicemen and women including Israel yeah as people imagine and, and you know we're we're real close buddies with Israel we're real close buddies with Britain yeah even with Trump as president and yet he 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 pulls this and it makes again in it makes no significant sense well no with the narrative that you've provided of it being a a leverage piece where yeah fine you you won't vote for it if there's a transgender thing in there fine the thing that i can do i'm the commander-in-chief of the military i'll just remove all of them and then it won't be a problem will it here let me do it right now yeah but knee jerk just done that that's very true most conservative part Mm -hmm. of the GOP is not the controlling section of the House. They they are a solid voting block. But that's the block that he wants. He once he has the solid block, then he will uh, coerce them to the best of his ability to get but his the coercion vote that he wants. hasn't been working. The tactics of hi, are you a trouble senator? You're gonna have to sit with me at a press conference. And the the ladies, while they look very put out, are just more like, okay, we're here. Oh, it doesn't work on the women. It might I mean, work on the men. I think you're trying to take a logical approach to somebody we've established is not terribly logical and operates off of emotional outbursts mm-hmm. and feelings about things. Yeah. And I think he felt that that was the solution. 
It yeah, was it, easily in grasp. It was just something that he yeah. could do spur of the moment, like from his phone in his hand immediately. And a posturing dominance thing. Yeah. It, it's that was a, a strutting peacock kind of kind of move. Yeah. How does this support the troops? Oh, it doesn't. It, it is. And the thing is, it it's has bad-headed. nothing to do. No, it has nothing to do with the troops. It has everything no. to do with that wall. Mm-hmm. I just... It's a budget thing. He is a numbers I, I, man. Remember, he didn't serve. He went to military no, school. He, deferred he doesn't know anything. Times. Yeah, he doesn't know mm-hmm. anything about actually first. serving. Yeah, no, he deferred four times mm-hmm. for, for for school and the fifth time for these mysterious bone spurs. Which have never plagued him since. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, we know this. You know, but the thing is, he has an agenda, and the agenda is not to support the military. He will grow the military industrial complex under the guise of supporting them because that's good play. That's that's just good words also, that he can put on the page. His friends. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean and himself. Uh, again, just like we said at the top of the show, following the money that is the that's what we can do with this president. We can follow the money and we can predict his actions or we can at least explain them very easily. It's like, where was the cost-benefit analysis here? In his head, real quick, on the plane. You know, <laughs> that was the thing that he could do. Terrible as it is, absolutely terrible. Well, I mean, he there's no way he had any context for the, the numerical value of the cost anyway. No. You know, because, I mean, immediately the articles came out that we spend, you know, like almost $42 million a year providing... Viagra, Viagra yeah. to the troops. So I mean, like it, it. And I think transgender health care was like eight million or something like that. It was a, it, it was a very small low drop number. in the bucket. Yeah. Of the health care budget for the military, trans. What we would predict. This is predict mm-hmm. and high end prediction for what we would spend on transgender health makes up of the health care, not the defense budget. The healthcare military budget yeah. makes up 0.13%. Mm-hmm. It's minuscule. Minuscule. And, and really, most of it, most of what uh, a, a transgender soldier is, is going to be going through is counseling. Yeah. And then slowly hormone therapy, hormone therapy and getting there, getting to the point. Where then then they will have their sex transition con- surgery. Well, yeah. their sex confirming to. surgery. Yeah, because mm-hmm. it's it's not gender reassignment; it's gender oh. affirming also, surgery. You, you know, another thing I confirmation—that's the word. Con- gender confirmation to, surgery. To our listeners and viewers, is one of the things that the military does is any sort of of what they deem a significant physiological issue with a soldier, they will go out of their way to medically correct. Mm -hmm. This includes a woman that has a disparity in cup size. Yeah. They will pay for implants or reduction to even things out. Mm -hmm. This is a uniform issue in the eyes of the military. Yeah. So, we spend money on boob jobs. We spend money on anything health-related. Yes. And so surgeries of is, all types. Yeah. yeah. I'm just trying to put it out there. This is all health care, and we do all sorts of health care for our military to make sure that they're performing at peak performance. Mm-hmm. We are, we are trying to make sure that we get the most out of every soldier. And a lot of the peak performance is up here in, in, the, in the brain space. And if somebody is having uh, gender dysphoria, they're not in the right brain space. No. They, they can't do some of the job because they're not all there. They're heavily distracted by yes. being, being themselves, which is really an unfortunate situation. No, you so want them to be able to concentrate on the job at hand. Mm-hmm. 
<sighs> and a lot of our discharges are due to what they see as irreconcilable mental health care issues. That is a lot yeah. of our discharges from the military. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I think I know a few of those. So we have, um, speaking of health care, I think this is a, a good transition point to what's been going on on Capitol Hill in the Senate. So, oh, woo. <laughs> yeah, I knew you'd, I knew you'd want to talk about that. So, John McCain, uh, again, this this is all happening since the last time that, that you were with us. John yeah. McCain uh, went in for surgery to have a, um, was it supposed to be a cyst or something? Uh, I can't remember what it was. It, But it turned out uh, uh, it was a clot. Uh, it was a blood clot. A, clot, a blood yeah. clot um, in the brain. But it turned out that it was a tumor. And a bad one. So he is on yes. borrowed time, essentially. Uh, the typical um, diagnosis for this particular kind of cancer at the stage that he has it is he has 6 to 12 months. So hopefully we'll see him around for another year, but we'll see how it goes. Well, he's getting excellent health care. He is getting excellent health care. You're right. And I was uh, uh, fact, I, I was harsh. What was that? Of his health care costs. How much? 70% of his health care costs are supplemented through discounts by the taxpayers. 70? 70. 70%. Hmm. I mean, he's, he is a rich man. So he could probably afford it anyway, but he's got health insurance, so of course he's going to use it. Some of the best. Some of the best health insurance. Made sure to have that. So I was harsh when he emerged from this, uh, this life-threatening situation and came in and voted to, and was the deciding vote. In fact, the vote was delayed until he could be present because they did not have enough votes to pass. Yeah. To they, get, they tied. They could right. get a tie and the, the the vice president did his duty again in mm-hmm. tie-breaking and of course it broke along party lines. Yes. There were two defections but that's what, you know, they could not have three. And that allowed discussion and voting to continue on the topic. A photorama, as it is called. Yes. If I recall correctly, um, and I'm going to have to look this up to confirm, but I want to say the senator from Hawaii also left cancer treatment to vote uh, Yes. The Democratic senator from Hawaii uh, is currently also battling cancer. um, And she has been one hell of a trooper and, and has stayed in Washington during this entire difficult discussion about health care. Mm-hmm. I imagine for different reasons. Uh, um, no, she pleaded this morning on the floor with tears welling in her eyes. Well, no, I mean the reasons being that yeah. she's oh, yeah, very she much in favor in, of right, health care continuing. To... In, in opposition yeah. of the Republican Party. Yeah. yeah. But, of course, I was harsh in that he came in to let that happen. Mm-hmm. And then he comes around at the wee hours of the morning because they're... It was early this morning. Not yes. letting it go. Yeah, it was like one thirty in the morning. And everybody is standing around waiting for the votes to, to come in. And he votes no on it. Audible gasps in the audience. There was some applause from some Democrats. Bernie Sanders was like, you know, knocking the, the senator next to him. He's like, hey, look at this. Well, something's about to happen. <laughs> you know, right, right as it happened, uh, Elizabeth Warren uh, applauded. You know, and, th- and there were several other. Um, Rubio, like, ominously stared at him. <laughs> because that's about all Rubio can do. Uh, no, no, Rubio can go, uh, this is how much to get the vote. That's what Rubio can do. Oh, and hide from his constituency. He can do that, too. He's really good at that. He is scared. He doesn't want to get yelled at. Yeah, he's afraid it'll get violent or something. 
So instead, he just does Facebook Live videos from his office in Washington. I mean, not only did McCain come out, really though. Florida. No, he doesn't. He doesn't show not up Not only Florida. did McCain come out and then vote to, you know, in favor of this Republican bullshit. Mm-hmm. He then did a press conference where he was like, oh, yeah, this whole thing sucks. And the Republicans are bad, basically. Like, all of this sucks, but I'm going to vote for it anyway. Like, how incredibly disingenuous. Well, what? let's look at what he voted for. Okay? Because the thing that he voted for was for conversation to continue happening. Yeah. Whereas before, yeah. everything was happening in seclusion. There was no public public display yeah, of anything that was at, at that was the, going on. At the same time, this public discussion did not actually show the public a bill. Yeah. Right. That was still in seclusion. Right, but that's what was happening and that's what he's voting to bring out and then when he voted no on this, it was because there wasn't any discussion. He voted no on the skinny repeal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Which is what we're talking about, the skinny repeal. Thank yeah, you for the skin, giving it a name. The, the skinny repeal um, would have been a, hey, we're going to re- repeal Obamacare. We're going to give ourselves a two-year gap where we can come up with a plan to replace. Um, if this skinny repeal is voted on the Senate, it would then go to the House. Now, interesting thing is, uh, I believe the day before, uh, Lindsey Graham and a few other Republican senators were going, the only way we will vote yes on the skinny repeal is if we get a guarantee from Paul Ryan that bef- before there is a, v- a vote, that they, they they will have a conference on the bill. Um, apparently, they were able to guarantee that uh, Paul Ryan said, yes, we, we will have a conference on it. Um, though, again, trusting Paul Ryan is something I would not do with a kitten. Um, <laughs> no, I wouldn't. No. So they, they got, got that yes, and so those, those, those three senators voted yes on the skinny repeal. Um, but McCain voted no on the skinny repeal, which would have, should the Republicans have not come up with a replacement, um, put 32 million Americans without health care. Potentially. Potentially. Uh, Likely. Well, Likely. Extremely likely. Yes and no, because a lot of the things that even they're, they're trying to do with the skinny repeal, Though it's in there, it can't be done. Not within, because remember the way that they're doing this is because is through a budget bill. Is through a budget bill. Parliamentary rules, because if it's through right. a budget, thing, budget reconciliation be, bill. But budget reconciliation. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Um, if it's through a budget reconciliation, they just need simple majority. Otherwise, within the Senate. You need sixty votes. Yeah, to be filibuster proof. Yeah, and they don't have that. They no. they barely have the simple majority. Yes, they and that they have the simple majority. It's just within the Republican Party there are a number of factions. It is more mm-hmm. fractured than it has been in a very long time. Yeah, which is obvi- obviously the problem since they control yeah. all three branches of government at this point and they still can't yes, get anything done but but the republican party is made up of a, a bunch of disparate groups you have people who are more fiscal conservatives or, or more old school as it were goldwater republicans are yeah. still within the republican party and there's the tea party um, and the, you, you have or you i'm have sorry the freedom party. caucus and uh well and it, the libertarians and you have the yeah. libertarian republicans yeah there's all these yeah. disparate ideologies that it's make up more the of a party. It's almost more of a coalition. That is, um, and we have the same thing also in within the Democratic Party at mm-hmm. this point. Yeah. In truth, if you look at the political landscape, there are about eight separate parties in our two-party system. 
And the reason they haven't split off is because none of them have enough clout to actually wage war against the other. Uh, and we do not have a parliamentary form of government. So Well, no, there's, you, no, there's nothing that requires us to have only a two-party system. No, there's nothing there. But in how we've been governing, governing for so long and how, more importantly, mm -hmm. the money's tied up. That's really it right the there. the resources. Yeah. It's impossible to form a small party to help disrupt the current two-party system. Because they'll just be buried. Heavily. Mm -hmm. um, it is almost impossible to get elected as what is looked at by by the political landscape of America as an independent party. Right. You are looked on by many as a joke. It's, we have two parties, pick one. I've heard that argument before. I have heard that argument. <sighs> We were so close. We really were to having having more breakouts, but unfortunately, it fractured it so much that we ended up with uh, Trump. Uh. So, um, everyone, your health care is still intact for now. For now, uh, certainly, there are uh, there are a number of issues. It, the Affordable Care Act is not a is, complete, a is not a complete solution. It always was a band aid. It's lots of duct tape, lots of duct tape holding that thing together, including going the exchanges. Back, <laughs> going back to actually historians, a number of political historians, um, when Medicaid and Mer Medicare were passed, mm -hmm. that was supposed to be the original stepping stones towards a, a, a single payer system. That yeah. was the intent. Once America had the, the 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 monetary cachet to trans transition into a single payer healthcare market, that was the intent. It was to be a stopgap in the transition to make sure that right now the, the 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 poorest and most vulnerable amongst us are taken care of. While the the economic juggernaut spins up to the point that we can get this done for everybody, you know what? We've never actually looked at what the definition of Medicare is. No, we have you not. Know, we've we've never actually brought that out. So let me let me pull directly from Medicare.gov. What's Medicare? Medicare is the federal health insurance program for people who are sixty five years of age of older certain younger people with disabilities and people with end stage renal disease permanent kidney failure requiring dialysis or a transplant some call sometimes called ESRD i want to highlight that portion because that mm -hmm. was put into play by president nixon i believe uh i'm not entirely certain if it was nixon but i can say uh with all certainty that if you were looking for death panels, mm -hmm. that was not too, too long ago, and it had everything to do with kidneys. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because it was determined, okay, we, we have this very narrow donor list. We have all these people who need them. And there was a panel to decide who gets the kidney. It was Nixon. Okay. It was Nixon. Uh, I mean, there's still yeah. a lot of problems with the continuation of dialysis and stuff like that for patients, too. Like, it, it, there's still a lot of problems having to do with renal failure and the way that we treat it. Entropy or is a thing. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, dialysis is a stopgap. But, you know, it, the fact that it was one of those things that was so, such, such a major issue... Mm -hmm. that it made it into Medicare. Specifically, that condition made it into Medicare. Yes. And keeps an awful lot of people still alive and with us. And, and to think, one, if people had the political will back in, you know, 1972. 1972. 
but they had the political will back then to put that on there. Mm-hmm. But had later on, they had done what was intended and expanded it incrementally. Say, for instance, in the 80s, if they expanded it to breast cancer patients, how many people would still be alive? Then they expanded it to lung cancer. Expanded it to brain cancer. Expanded it to more debilitating conditions. And then, well, it's just logical. Expanded to everybody. Yeah. It's an interesting story, and I I recommend uh, taking a look at it. Um, Especially if you ever consider maybe donating, donating a kidney or something like that. Wouldn't be a bad thing. Um, anyway, uh, there are also several parts of Medicare, A, B, C, and D. So Medicare part A covers the inpatient hospital stays, care, uh, care in skilled nursing facilities, hospice care, and some home health care. So if you strip out Medicare, all those people that are in hospice, in nursing homes, they got nowhere to go. Because most of those homes are funded almost entirely, great majority, by Medicare Part A. Uh, Medicare Part B is medical insurance. It covers doctor services, outpatient care, medical supplies, and preventative services. That's what typically we think of as health insurance. Yeah, and preventative services, I think the number is for every $100 on preventative services if used on a regular basis saves per individual uh, per capita about $2,000 in medical costs. Yeah, I, I wouldn't doubt that number. That's, that sounds right. I have, no, I have no verification that that's the number. Send us a link if you, if you find us and, and disagree with us. If you find the better number, yeah. please give it to us. Yeah, we, we like facts. Medicare Part C is the Medicare Advantage plans. So it's a type of Medicare health plan offered by a private insurance company that contracts with Medicare to provide you with your Part A and Part B benefits. Um, so this, now, is this is where sure private agencies, tricky. this is where and private agencies get their hands Yes, in. and th- these private a- You there? Ron? Okay, you, yeah. you, you, there you, we fr- go. you froze for a second. Okay. This is where private agencies. Eh, there you this go. This is where private agencies, <laughs> uh, Humana specifically, here in Florida. Yeah, Humana's a big one. Uh, have a tendency of trying to play the waiting game with your health coverage. Because it's cheaper if you die. Yeah, there is some of that going on. They'll Actually, never admit to lot. it. Yeah, but they'll never admit to it, of course. You know, no, we're just taking the time to make sure that you get the proper care. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, Medicare Advantage plans include health maintenance organizations, HMOs, preferred provider organizations, PPOs, private fee-for-service plans, mm, dubious, special needs plans, and Medicare medical savings account plans, your FSA cards and things like that. Yes, which are yeah. horrible. Also hate funky them. and terrible. Hate them, hate them, hate them, hate them. Uh, if you're enrolled in a Medicare Advantage plan, most Medicare services are covered through the plan and aren't paid for under under original Medicare. Most Medicare Advantage plans offer prescription drug coverage as well. Most. And Not that's all. where they get you. Yeah. Is they get you to sign on. You're mostly signing on so you can get that delicious, delicious prescription plan and then when actual bad things happen they try to kill you yes but here's where medicare part d comes in and that's specifically prescription drug drug uh, drug coverage Uh, part d adds prescription drug coverage to the original medicare so not medicare part c this is the part that is single payer medicare okay that's the part d part and also it had it's a just like obamacare and the ACA, it had significant problems getting off the ground. 
Um, some Medicare cost plans, uh, some Medicare private fee-for-service plans, and Medicare medical savings account plans are all part of Medicare Part D. These plans are offered by insurance companies and other private insurance companies approved by Medicare. Medicare Advantage plans may also offer prescription drug coverage that follows the same rules as Medicare prescription drug plans. They may, but not yeah. necessarily so. So it's, um, this, this is what your grandparents and perhaps your parents at this stage are um, relying on in many cases. And this is also one of the things that was expanded under the ACA, mm -hmm. if you were in a blue state. Yeah. If you were in a red state. They declined to they declined get in that money, money cases, yeah. for expansion. They declined federal money to expand coverage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Money from the federal government to make things better in your state for your citizens. Like Voldemort here in Florida. He said no because he needs enough souls to appease his debts. <laughs> oh, Rick Scott, he's a terrible human being. Um, uh, well, he, he may not be a yeah, human being. You know, a Republican gala made a deal for, you know, getting some funding for a number of his projects. And he has to get rid of at least 15 million souls to pay that off. He does own, like, a health insurance company, doesn't he? Uh, well, one of the things that he's heavily invested in and why he's quite so interested in making certain that people get drug tests is he is involved with a drug testing company. Surprise, surprise. And that mm -hmm. drug testing company is one of the ones that the state of Florida uses. You would see this as a massive conflict of interest. And you would be correct. It is uh, Solantic is the name of the company. Uh, so you can take a look at that. And that goes all the way back. Uh, he founded that company in 2001. And uh, yeah, so that's still out there. And his, uh, his wife owns a company that uh, sprays for Zika mosquitoes. Hmm. So. I'm guessing they're getting a wonderful government grant to do that job here in Florida. Yeah, probably. Probably. It's apparently a multi-million dollar business. She's doing very well. Yeah. Bookshelf Zombie mentioned that uh, Voldemort also was once part of the company that owned Winter Park Memorial Hospital. Uh, yes. <laughs> but you know what? He's, he's at the... million souls, folks. This 15 is the, million. He cannot be... Governor any longer. This is his so last try term. To be senator, and then he'll probably try to be president. President yeah, Skeletor. Voldemort. He has no nose. Mm, he reminds me a little more of Skeletor. It still reminds me of Bat Boy. Skele Skeletor is Bat Boy's a good one. He reminds me of Bat Boy. Really, with that. Bat Boy's a good one. With that look. Ah. <laughs> yeah. It's terrible. Oh, uh, it's as in that musical in 2014, uh, he was apparently worth uh, 132 million dollars. Oh, so he's just he's just about 70 million shy from being able to actually run for president. Mm -hmm. He owns 60 acres in Montana worth 1.4 million. Yeah, but you know he's diversified. You know, I would own that in Montana if I could too. So, you know, I can't really... It's the rainy day fund. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Um, mm. Okay, so yeah, we could, we could go into all the dirty laundry that we have on, on the Republican governors and what they... How they thought that was a good idea. I'm not sure most of them have, because in the time since the initial ACA rollouts and Medicare expansion... Many states have slowly come around. Once it was no longer like a hot button thing, and they got more and more of their constituents saying, "No, please, please help us, please help us, please help us." Eventually, they started rolling in. But there's still a good 18 states, 18 to 22 states, I think, that uh, 
did not take advantage of the Medicare expansion. No, because that we don't want anything to do with Obamacare. That was what the it was. We don't want anything to do with is because a black man's name is tied to this legislation. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Yeah. That makes Let, me very depressed. Call it for what it is. That makes me very depressed. What else can we talk about? You know, we well, we, we've talked there, there, a, we've talked a great deal about about all that, um, and and really, I'm at the end of that rope. And before I tie it into a noose, I'd like to have something better to well, <laughs> better to look again, at. We, one of the things that we think? discuss in the pre-show, uh, I think we should do here, is okay. our individual takes on on the Trump presidency six months in. 